Hello and welcome to this channel. And if you are the first time here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button to see the latest technology videos. In this video, we are discussing about data science and machine learning. So, first, introduction to machine learning. So, machine learning is the most in demand technology in today's market and its applications range from self-driving cars to predicting diseases. And the term machine learning was first coined by Arthur Samuel in the year 1959. So the very first formal definition was a computer program is said to learn from experience C with respect to some class of task T and performance measure P. If its performance at a task in T as measured by P improves with experience C. Tom Mitchell. So what is machine learning? So in simple terms, machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence AI which provides machines the ability to learn automatically and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed to do so. In this sense, it is the practice of getting machines to solve problems by gaining the ability to think. The machine learning process involves building a predictive model that can be used to find a solution for a problem statement. So the steps in the machine learning process. Define objective, then data gathering, preparing data, data exploration, building a model, model evaluation and prediction. So need for machine learning. Increase in data generation. Uncover patterns and trends in data. Improve decision making. Solve complex problems. So machine learning applications. Traffic alerts. Social media. Product recommendation. Virtual personal assistance. Self-driving cars. Google Translate. So machine learning basics. So before we dive deeper, let's get familiar with some of the most commonly used terminologies in machine learning. First algorithm. So a machine learning algorithm is a set of rules and statistical techniques used to learn patterns from data and draw significant information from it. It is the logic behind a machine learning model. So model. A model is the main component of machine learning and is trained by using an algorithm. And it maps all decisions that a model is supposed to take based on the given input in order to get the correct output. Then predictor variables. It is a feature of the data that can be used to predict the output. Then response variable. It is the feature or the output variable that needs to be predicted by using the predictor variables. Then training data. So the machine learning model is built using the training data. And the training data helps the model to identify key trends and patterns essential to predict the output. Then testing data. So after the model is trained, it must be tested to evaluate how accurately it can predict an outcome. And this is done by the testing data set. So Jupyter Notebook installation. So in order to implement the machine learning codes, you will be needing an IDE and here we will be working with uh, Jupyter. So installation of Jupyter Notebook is very simple. All you need to do is type a PIP install Jupyter on your command prompt. 
then python fundamentals for machine learning so machine learning is the most promising careers for the future so we make the computer learn based on the past experiences through the data stored or create algorithms that make the computer learn by itself so the programming language that mostly everyone chooses is python why it is because of the support for these domains with the inbuilt libraries such as pandas scikit-learn numpy and so many more and we will talk about a few of such libraries first numpy so numpy is a python package that stands for numerical python and it is the core library for scientific computing which contains a powerful n dimensional array object so python numpy arrays provide tools for integrating c c++ etc and it is also useful in linear algebra random number capability etc and numpy array can also be used as an efficient multi dimensional container for generic data then pandas pandas is an open source software library that is built on top of numpy and it is used for data manipulation analysis and cleaning and python pandas is well suited for different kinds of data such as tabular data with heterogeneously typed columns unordered and ordered and unordered time series data and arbitrary matrix data with row and column tables then unlabeled data and any other form of observational or statistical data sets then python pandas operations first slicing then merging and joining concatenation then change column headers changing the index and operations then scikit learn so scikit learn is a library used to perform machine learning in python and scikit learn is an open source library that is licensed under bsd and is reusable in various fonts encouraging academic and commercial use and it provides a range of supervised and unsupervised learning algorithms in python and it consists of popular algorithms and libraries and apart from that it also contains the packages first numpy so numpy is a python package that stands for numerical python and it is the core library for scientific computing which contains a powerful n dimensional array object then matplotlib.pyplot is a plotting library used for 2d graphics in python programming language and it can be used in python scripts shell and web application servers scipy scipy is an open source python library used to solve scientific and mathematical problems and it is built on the numpy extension and helps in data manipulation and visualization so to implement the scikit learn we first need to import the packages and you can download these two packages using the command line or if you are using pycharm you can directly install it by going to your setting in the same way to do it for other packages then machine learning classification so a machine can learn to solve a problem by following any three approaches first supervised learning so supervised learning is a technique in which we teach or train the machine using data that is well labeled and to understand supervised learning let us consider an analogy so as kids we all needed guidance to solve math problems and our teachers helped us understand what addition is and how it is done so similarly you can think of supervised learning as a type of machine learning that involves a gate and the labeled data set is the teacher that will train you to understand the patterns in the data 
and here the labeled data set is the training data set and now with having a basic understanding of what supervised learning is let us also understand what makes this kind of learning important so importance of supervised learning so learning gives the algorithm experience which can be used to output the predictions for new unseen data and experience also helps in optimizing the performance of the algorithm and real world computations can also be taken care of by the supervised learning algorithms then types of supervised learning regression and classification so regression so regression is the kind of supervised learning that learns from the labeled data sets and is then able to predict a continuous valued output for the new data given to the algorithm and it is used whenever the output required is a number such as money or height etc so some popular supervised learning algorithms are first linear regression so this algorithm assumes that there is a linear relationship between the two variables input and output of the data it has learned from the input variable is called the independent variable and the output variable is called the dependent variable so when unseen data is passed to the algorithm it uses the function calculates and maps the input to a continuous value for the output then logistic regression so this algorithm predicts discrete values for the set of independent variables that have been passed to it and it does the prediction by mapping the unseen data to the logit function that has been programmed into it and the algorithm predicts the probability of the new data and so its output lies between the range of 0 and 1 and then polynomial regression so polynomial regression is a method used to handle non linear data and non linearly separable data is basically when you cannot draw out a straight line to study the relationship between dependent and independent variables then support vector regression for support vector machine regression or svr we identify a hyperplane with a maximum margin such that the maximum number of data points are within those margins and it is quite similar to the support vector machine classification algorithm and classification so classification on the other hand is the kind of learning where the algorithm needs to map the new data that is obtained to any one of the two classes that we have in our data set and the classes need to be mapped to either 1 or 0 which in real life translated as yes or no rains or does not rain and so forth and the output will be either one of the classes and not a number as it was in regression so some of the most well known algorithms are first naive bias classifier so naive bias classifier this is a classification technique based on an assumption of independence between predictors or what is known as bayes theorem and in simple terms a naive bias classifier assumes that the presence of a particular feature in a class is unrelated to the presence of any other feature so building a bayesian model is simple and particularly functional in the case of enormous data sets and along with the simplicity the naive bias is known to outperform sophisticated classification methods as well Bayes' theorem provides a way of calculating posterior probability (PC) of x from PC, 
px and px of c and the expression is post for posterior probability is pc of x equal to px of c into pc by p of x then decision tree decision tree is classified based on the feature values and they use the method of information gain and find out which feature of the data set gives the best of information and make that as the root node and so on till they are able to classify each instance of the data set so every branch in the decision tree represents a feature of the data set and they are one of the most widely used algorithms for classification then support vector machine so support vector machine or sva it is a supervised learning machine learning classification algorithm that has become extremely popular nowadays owing to its extremely efficient process support vector machine is a discriminative classifier that is formally designed by a separative hyperplane and it is a representation of examples as points in space that are mapped so that the points of different categories are separated by a gap as wide as possible so we have margin hyperplane and support vectors then unsupervised learning so unsupervised learning can be thought of as a self learning where the algorithm can find previously unknown patterns in data sets that do not have any sort of labels it helps in modeling probability density functions finding anomalies in the data and much more so to give you a simple example think of a student who has textbooks and all the required material to study but has no teacher to give ultimately the student will have to learn by himself or herself to pass the exams so this sort of self learning is what we have scaled into unsupervised learning for machines so importance of unsupervised learning it works on data sets that are unlabeled and finds patterns that would previously not be known to us and the patterns obtained are helpful if we need to categorize the elements or find an association between them and they can also help detect anomalies and defects in which in the data which can be taken care of by us so types of unsupervised learning are clustering and association clustering so clustering is the type of unsupervised learning where you find the patterns in the data that you are working on it may be the shape size color etc which can be used to group data items or create clusters so some popular algorithms in clustering are first hierarchical clustering this algorithm builds clusters based on the similarity between different data points in the data set and it goes over the various features of the data point and looks for the similarity between them if the data points are found to be similar they are grouped together and this continues until the data set has been grouped which creates a hierarchy for each of these clusters then k means clustering so this algorithm k means clustering works step by step where the main goal is to achieve clusters that have labels to identify them and the algorithm creates clusters of different data points which are homogeneous as possible by calculating the centroid of the cluster and making sure that the distance between 
this android and the new data point is as little as possible so the smallest distance between the data point and the centroid determines which a cluster it belongs to while making sure the clusters do not interlay with each other and the centroid acts like the heart of the cluster and this ultimately gives us cluster which can be labeled as needed then k n n clustering so k n n clustering this is probably the simplest of the machine learning algorithms and as the algorithm does not really learn but rather classifies the new data point based on the data sets that have been stored by it this algorithm is also called a lazy learner because it learns only when the algorithm is given a new data point and it works well with the smaller data sets as huge data sets take time to learn then association association is the kind of unsupervised learning where you find the dependencies of one data item to another data item and map them such that they help you profit better and some popular algorithms in association rule mining are first a priori algorithm so the a priori algorithm is a breadth first search based which calculates the support between items and this support basically maps the dependency of one data item with another which can help us understand what data item influences the possibility of something happening to the other data item for example bread influences the buyer to buy milk and eggs so that mapping helps increase profits for the store and that sort of mapping can be learned using this algorithm which yields rules as for its output then fp growth algorithm so the frequency pattern fp algorithm finds the count of the pattern that has been repeated adds that to a table and then finds the most plausible item and sets that as the root of the tree and other data items are then added into the tree and the support is calculated so if that particular branch fails to meet the threshold of the support it is proven and once all the iterations are completed a tree with the root to the item will be created which are then used to make the rules of the association and this algorithm is faster than a priori as the support is calculated and checked for increasing iterations rather than creating a rule and checking the support from the data set then reinforcement learning so reinforcement learning is the ability of an agent to interact with the environment and find out what is the best outcome and it follows the concept of hit and the trial method and the agent is rewarded or penalized with a point for a correct or a wrong answer and on the basis of the positive reward points gained the model trains its and again once trained it gets ready to predict the new data presented to it so input raw data output model training model trained and in input and model trained and then output so advanced the machine learning concepts so some of the advanced concepts of machine learning is regularization in machine learning so in general regularization means to make things regular or acceptable and this is exactly why we use it for applying applied machine learning and in the context of machine learning regularization is the process that regularizes or shrinks the coefficients towards zero and in simple terms regularization discourages learning a more complex or flexible model to prevent overfitting so regularization techniques are ridge regression and lasso regression ridge regression 
This regularization techniques performs L2 regularization and it modifies the RSS by adding the penalty shrinkage quantity equivalent to the share of the magnitude of coefficients. Then lasso regression. This regularization technique performs L1 regularization and it modifies the RSS by adding the penalty shrinkage quantity equivalent to the sum of the absolute value of coefficients. Then overfitting and underfitting. So building a machine learning model is not just about feeding the data. There are a lot of deficiencies that affect the accuracy of any model. So overfitting and underfitting in machine learning are such deficiencies that hinder the accuracy as well as the performance of the model. So overfitting in machine learning. So a statistical model is said to be overfitted when we feed it a lot more data than necessary. So to make it relatable, imagine trying to fit into oversized apparel. So when a model fits more data than it actually needs, it starts catching the noisy data and inaccurate values in the data. So as a result, the efficiency and accuracy of the model decreases. Then underfitting in machine learning. So in order to avoid overfitting, we could stop training at an earlier stage, but it might also lead to the model not being able to learn enough from training data. That it may be find it difficult to capture the dominant trend, and this is known as underfitting. So the result is the same as overfitting, inefficiency in predicting outcomes. Then, dimensionality reduction technique. So machine learning in general works wonders when the data set provided for training the machine is large and concise. So usually having a good amount of data helps us build a better predictive model since we have more data to train the machine with. However, using a large data set has its pitfalls. And the biggest pitfall is the curse of dimensionality. And it turns out that in large dimensional data sets there might be lots of inconsistencies in the features or lots of redundant features. And this increases the computation time and makes data processing and EDA more convoluted. So to get rid of the curse of dimensionality, a process called dimensionality reduction was introduced. And the dimensionality reduction techniques can be used to filter only a limited number of significant features needed for training. And this is where PCA comes in. So, principal component analysis or PC. So, principal component analysis PCA is a dimensionality reduction technique that enables you to identify correlations and patterns in a data set. And it helps in transforming it into a data set of significantly lower dimensions without a loss of any important information. So the main idea behind PCA is to figure out patterns and correlations among various features in the data set. And on finding a strong correlation between different variables, a final decision is made about reducing the dimensions of the data in such a way that the significant data is still retained. Such a process is very essential in solving complex data-driven data -driven problems that involve the use of high-dimensional data sets. Then practice data sets for machine learning. So data sets are an integral part of machine learning and natural language processing, NLP. So without training data sets, machine learning algorithms would not have to a way to learn text mining, text classification, or how to categorize products. And uh, now we will list a uh, free data sets which you can use to practice machine learning. 
so data sets for machine learning so in this context generally is referred to as regression classification and clustering with relational data then wine quality so properties of red and white in hover divine samples from north of portugal and the goal here is to model wine quality based on some physiochemical tests then credit card default so predicting credit card default is a valuable use of machine learning and this data set includes payment history demographics credit and the default data then data sets for natural language processing so nlp is all about text data and for data like text the data sets need to have real world applications so that sanity checks can be performed easily so amazon reviews it contains approximately 35 million reviews from amazon spanning 18 years and data includes user information product information ratings and text review then news group classification so collection of almost 20000 news group documents partitioned evenly across 20 news groups it is great for practicing topic modeling and text classification then finance and economics data sets for machine learning so financial quantitative records are kept for decades and hence this industry is perfectly suited for machine learning content so a great source of economic and financial data that is useful to build models to predict stock prices or economic indicators then the imf data so the international monetary fund imf publishes data on international finances foreign exchange reserves debate rates commodity prices and investments then image data sets for computer vision so image data sets are useful to train a wide range of computer vision applications like medical imaging technology face recognition and autonomous vehicles image net so this de facto image data set for new algorithms is organized according to the word net hierarchy for each node is depicted by hundreds and thousands of images and google's open images so a collection of around 9 million urls to create annotated with labels spanning over 60000 6000 categories under create creative commons then sentiment analysis data sets for machine learning so sentiment analysis can be defined as systematic analysis of online expressions imdb reviews so data set for binary sentiment classification it features 25000 movie reviews and sentiment 140 uses 160000 tweets with emotions pre removed so this was a brief discussion on machine learning and uh, machine learning engineers engineers so machine learning engineers work in close collaboration with data scientists while data scientists extract meaningful insights from a large data sets and communicate the information to business stakeholders so machine learning engineers ensure uh, that the models used by data scientists can ingest vast amounts of real time data for generating more accurate results then robotics engineers so robotics engineers are responsible for designing testing and building robots that are productive and safe to operate as well as economical to purchase and maintain then nlp scientists so nlp scientists are primarily responsible for designing and developing machines and applications that can learn the patterns of speech of a human language and also translate spoken words into other languages then computer vision engineer so as a computer vision engineer you use software to handle pre processing and analyzing of large data populations and your efforts support the automation of predictive decision making efforts so who is a machine learning professional so a machine learning professional is specialized in developing machine learning algorithms that can learn from or adapt to the data 
and make predictions. Then software developer or engineer. So software developers or engineers with specialization in artificial intelligence and machine learning are the creative minds behind intelligent computer programs. And their main job is to develop efficient machine learning algorithms and applications. Then human-centered machine learning design. So machine learning has an exclusive branch that is dedicated to designing machine learning algorithms centered around humans. And hence the name human-centered machine learning. And human-centered machine learning designers are responsible for creating intelligent systems that can learn the preferences and behavior patterns of individual humans through information processing and pattern recognition. So this was a brief discussion on data science and machine learning. And if you are the first time here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button to see the latest technology videos. And if you are the first time here, subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button in order to stay updated about the most trending technologies. Thank you for watching this video. Bye for now.